um, with the Career Studies minor. I've been involved with the LGBTA and we do do some peer education. Um, but you know, that's not the same thing as having a real educational background, academic background in Career Studies. And Sheena was also mentioning that it's more than just like LGBT studies, it's about questioning just kind of reality and the people, people that you are around and the things that you do every day. Um, and I, I really personally have really started incorporating that kind of thought process into my life um, as a queer person, both in every aspect of my life, politically and personally and all of that. So I think it's a really valuable thing to have academically. Tell me a little bit more about the other club you're involved in, the new sorority that was started just recently here at CSUN. Um, yeah, I got involved with Gamma Rho Lambda. It's actually a national sorority. We're starting a chapter here on campus. Um, Let's see, what do you want to know? Uh, we just got started up last semester, um, so we're pretty small, but we're starting to grow. Um, our core ideal is that we're an all-inclusive and queer-based women's sorority. Uh, we, we really are looking to provide a home for people that come here who don't feel that they fit in with the tra traditional Greek system um, or with some of the traditional organizations on campus. Um, so yeah, we're trying to provide a home that's just for everyone, basically, with a queer mindset um, kind of behind it and trying to break down the norms of heterosexism and heteronormativity that exist within the Greek system um, that we feel really hinders some of our queer sisters. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're about. Can you say a little bit more about the heterosexism in, in the Greek system in, in general? Why do you feel it's, is it important to have a queer, friendly sorority as opposed to just any sorority. Yeah, absolutely. There's, um, well, I never personally experienced um, a mainstream sorority, although I do have quite a few friends who have. Um, and it's a problem within the sororities and within the fraternities that um, it may not necessarily be explicitly stated, but there's definitely sort of an implicit expectation to live up to um, heteronormative standards like having a boyfriend if you're a girl or having a girlfriend if you're a boy and taking um, opposite sex partners to events etc. Um, but one of the most disturbing things for me was knowing a couple of my friends who joined sororities and when you join a sorority you're expecting to find a home and a family somewhere to exist on campus that you feel comfortable and supported. Well two of my friends joined these sororities, two separate sororities and they're both lesbian women and neither of them is out to their sorority sisters. And to me, that, that doesn't work. You can't call someone your family and your friend, especially when you're choosing these people to be your families and your friend, and then not be able to be who you are around them on a regular basis. Um, so for me, that's the biggest issue that we're combating is just homophobia even within the Greek system and trying to show the rest of the Greek world that you don't have to be any particular way to be Greek. You don't have to be any particular person to be Greek. You can really just benefit from all the positive aspects of the Greek community and be who you are. So, Did you have any opposition from the Greek community, open opposition, or from AS even, or from anybody? Um, I'm not the best person to ask about that. I didn't actually start the organization myself. Um, my dear friend Chloe Quintua, she's the one who actually started the organization on this campus. Um, I haven't I haven't really encountered any direct opposition from AS or from other Greek organizations, uh, but we're also still just getting started and we haven't really started to rock the boat just yet. <laughs> so we'll see what happens when we do start doing that kind of thing. Um, I'm hoping that it will be fairly warm and welcoming. It's a pretty good campus to be on as a I have organization. I to say, I mean, even um, for the Queer Studies program, um, you know, while we were f formulating uh, what we thought we wanted to have it be. Um, there was never actually a question from any level of the university that came through that felt like it was trying to restrict what we were doing academically or anything. In fact, we had support at all levels going through the process of actually making this program a reality. And I think that's a pretty great testament to like the the culture at Northridge about being accepting of different thoughts, ideas, and communities, mm -hmm. you know? And I would say that also, like, the administrative aspects of the campus and the community are very open and willing to work with us, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, for me, 
it's always about the students. Mm -hmm. um, and just I've seen some of the experiences that my friends have had in the Greek community that I want to address. So that's what it's always about for me. Now, let me turn to Kevin, who coordinates the Ally Project here at CSUN. And Kevin, can you tell us a little bit more about what the Ally Project actually is? Sure. I'd like to give you just a brief history, though, because uh, it started in the fall of last year, um, taking that first queer studies course with Dr. Gina Masakesme. And it was such a politically charged semester that uh, in lieu of a final project, everybody had a choice of these political projects to become involved in. And so this was one that I chose. And it was. Um, about going around, previously here at CSUN there had existed uh, ally trainings, meaning somebody would go around and speak, staff would speak to other staff and faculty uh, about queer issues and sort of queer sensitivity trainings. Um, but there didn't exist at that time anything for students. And so what we have now done since then, we've kept the program alive. Um, we have a by students, for students, uh, allied trainings and what I do with a revolving group of volunteers is go around and speak in classrooms. Professors invite us in. Uh, I make my pitch at department meetings and do what I can to get in and then we go in and uh, depending on the needs of the professor we we can address issues of terminology if they're about to approach a lesson where they think many of the students won't be very knowledgeable about just basic terminology. Um, but the most powerful part of our our uh, presentations and our trainings is really the the personal experience narratives of our trainers for example we will have people tell a coming out story and somebody else might tell a story um, about how homophobia has affected them if we find somebody courageous enough to do that um, and that's really where I think it's been effective and people have you know I think people understand what we're doing and it's really all about promoting tolerance on campus and so far, I think it's been effective. Now, let me ask you, this sounds really, really time consuming. You know, you're going to these meetings and you have to get these people together to actually speak to classes. And I know you have a family at home. Why are you doing this? <laughs> um, OK, well, I, I had an occasion to read an article by a well-known feminist by the name of Barbara Smith entitled Homophobia, Why Bring It Up? And it affected me very deeply. Um, in this article, she, she discusses homophobia as sort of the last acceptable bastion of bigotry. Um, not the last <laughs> example of bigotry, but it's acceptable. And even those on the progressive left often uh, will sit by when comments are made about queer people because they have to defend their hetero credentials. Um, if you were to stand up for somebody when you know, you're at the mechanic or watching the Laker game or whatever it is, uh, your hetero credentials then come into question. And this addresses the idea of heterosexism. Uh, it's the norm here that, you know, we believe heterosexism is normal and the norm and the only norm. So I got to thinking how it might have affected me in my life. And I had always thought I was pretty progressive and, you know, left leaning. And uh, I started thinking about my relationship with my son. I have a 13 year old son. And it hit me that, you know, as he's getting older, and he's still very much a little guy inside, uh, he still wants to hug me. He still wants to give me a kiss, and sometimes in public. And I thought to myself, was I doing this? <laughs> was I, because I didn't want people to think he might be soft? And that's really when it started. I started to think, uh, in spite of, of all of my progressive thought, uh, I was allowing my own relationship with my son to be affected. And so that's why I continue doing it. It's why I kept doing it after the class ended. Uh, and why I'll do it, well, as long as I'm here at CSUN. Great. 